which you can have free speech, especially in our elected parliament. I think it's brilliant. I'm really glad that he had the confidence to say something. And unfortunately, as you say, I think, you know, he did so knowing he was going to get backlash. This isn't the first time that this has happened, um, especially being a man um, speaking on abortion, which makes no sense because truth is truth, no matter who says it. Um, so I'm really pleased that he that he said something for sure. Do you think this will encourage others to give their opinion? They may well be uh, one or two ministers, for example, around the cabinet table who think, actually, I agree with him. Or do you think, as I, as I assume Amy might well say in a minute, that this is just a view that is exclusively found within a very small minority of people? It's definitely not exclusively found in a small minority of people. Um, 70% of women in the UK do want to see a reduction um, in our abortion law time limit, which is currently very high. Um, so I don't think that he's actually in the minority in that sense. Whether it will encourage more people to speak out or not, I'm not sure. I'd like to think that it will inspire more people, but also the backlash that he's received and the horrendous abuse that he's got online, I think will make a lot of people want to not say anything for fear of of something they may receive themselves. Amy, putting aside your view on, on being pro-choice, do you actually think there is a problem that we've identified here where someone like Danny Kruger can't give his opinion? Or do you think it's exclusively right, actually, that this should be a women-only debate? I think the problem here is that it's a politician having a say on what should or shouldn't go on in a woman's body. And that isn't the decision of politicians. That's a healthcare choice. That's an individual healthcare choice between a woman and her doctor. Um, and this is what we've seen in America. It's a very slippery slope where when um, politicians start getting involved in this type of thing, we've seen what can happen. And I think when people heard Danny Kruger say what he said, they got alarm bells that similar um, a similar situation could unfold in the UK as to what we've seen in America, which instills, rightly so, fear in um, the hearts of most women in the country. Yeah. Um, Madeline, I'm wondering then, how do you think we can get to a point as a society where, because I, do, I don't know if you saw this, both of you actually, but uh, Prue Leith, who was Danny Kruger's mother, the famous baker, and she's world-renowned, she actually wrote a piece in The Spectator saying she herself, it, what, they weren't her comments and she's pro-choice. She herself was hounded online for the comments her son made. I'm wondering, Madeline, does this not tell us about the really toxic atmosphere out there where if you say something that goes against the Twitter grain, then hell hath no fury like Twitter scorned. Absolutely. And I think especially if it's on a topic like abortion and you're a man um, and you have the wrong opinion. I mean, just a few days ago, Prince Harry was being celebrated for his opinion on abortion because he had what what Twitter think is, you know, the right opinion. So he's a man with an opinion on abortion that is considered the correct one. So we celebrate him. But someone like um, Danny Kruger has the incorrect opinion. And so we just slander him as much as possible. Amy, I think the the reason that people would say that that is the incorrect opinion is because you can't be pro-life. If you're pro-life, you're either pro-forced birth or pro-making the procedure extremely unsafe for women and endangering women and also alienating a lot of women from being able to access an abortion because they haven't got the finances to travel. Um, so there isn't such thing as pro-life. And I think that's why it's an untenable position to take. Amy, yeah, I, I, you know, there will be some people watching this who disagree with that point of view. But the point is, though, do you think that the, and I mentioned the, the uh, hounding of Prue Leith, Danny Kruger's mother there, do you think people should ultimately be allowed to express what they would call pro-life views? Of course they should be allowed to express whatever they like. It's free speech. But I also think equally they shouldn't be surprised when they're greeted with very valid criticism 
potentially from women who have experienced this issue firsthand. And I think that's why people have a problem with men getting involved, because this can't happen in your body. So you will never know the pain and the absolute um, disarray of being faced with the reality that something's invaded your body, essentially, and you are very limited in your options. And it's an extremely trapping place to be. And I think that's why people get frustrated when men enter the argument.